Hello, everyone. Hello, hello, hello. I'm Elisa McCauley. You might be wondering, where is that voice coming from? Where? I actually have a voice interpreter with me this evening. You might also wonder, what's up with that? Deaf and proud. What does that mean? You'll understand as things go along. Deaf is the proper word that I use to describe people in my culture, not in the negative terms like deaf mute, hearing loss, hearing impaired. The best word to use is deaf, D-E-A-F. Deaf means what? People who cannot hear, like me. Who am I? I'm from California. I grew up in an entirely deaf family. My parents are deaf. My two younger sisters are deaf. I was raised learning my first language, ASL, American Sign Language. Now, please note that there are many sign languages all over the world, and they're nothing like ASL. They're very different. My language is ASL. It's my first language. English is my second language. I'm bilingual. I was raised to argue with my sisters just like everybody else, but in ASL. I asked my parents questions, I was curious, and I discussed through ASL. If I needed to talk with my parents, I used a video phone. There was a screen that I would sign into and I would watch and see my grandparents sign back to me. Where did I go to school? To a deaf school, of course, where everyone signed, including teachers, coaches, the president of the, of the school, everybody signed. I was raised to be very proud. I loved signing. It's my favorite language. A magical land? Why am I calling it magical? Gallaudet University in Washington, D.C. is the only deaf university in the world. International deaf people, American deaf people, from the states, everybody goes there. And everyone there can sign, including faculty, staff, students, everybody can sign, including the cafeteria workers, they can sign as well. It's like my second home there. The moment I got there, I felt like I was home. And everyone there is like me as well. How was it established? How was Gallaudet University first established? In 1864, Abraham Lincoln, that's him, signed the charter establishing the university, Gallaudet University. Now take a look at the sculpture. You can see that his left hand is the letter A in American Sign Language for Abraham, and the right hand is signing the letter L for Lincoln. The sculptor actually knew American Sign Language, and he put that little uh, hint in there in the sculpture. Now Abraham Lincoln signed the charter and ever since 1864, the university had been run by deaf, uh, by hearing people. And that continued for decades until 1988, where a hearing president of Gallaudet University decided to resign. The board of trustees set up a search committee to find the new replacement president. They asked the community for input. What is it you'd like to see in the new president? And of course, the community said they thought it was time for a deaf president of this Gallaudet University. So the search committee searched, and in 1988, they found three final candidates. Two were deaf, and one was hearing. The community 
assumed that the committee would choose one of the two deaf candidates, it made sense. The process continued, and one week before the announcement was to be made, the students decided to go ahead and set up a rally and insist that the Board of Trustees choose a deaf candidate, one of the two deaf candidates. In fact, they set up a protest camp that they called Tent City. It was full of students staying in tents during the rally. They camped out on campus until March 6th, 1988, The Gallaudet community, as I call it, faculty, students, and staffs all assembled into the gymnasium. There were probably 200 people in that gym waiting for the announcement of the next Gallaudet University president. They waited for several hours until one guy showed up through the doors. He walked in, and he was the secretary of the board of trustees. Everybody was staring at him. He had a stack of flyers that he set down on the floor and exited the building. He actually ran out of the gymnasium. Can you imagine? The community were all looking at each other and wondering what was up with the flyers. The leader of the protest took a look at the paper. It was an announcement that the Board of Trustees had named Elizabeth Zinzer, the only hearing candidate, to be the next president of the Deaf University. The community were like, what? Not again. They can't take any more, they thought to themselves. So they all rallied and marched to the White House in Washington, D.C. That's actually where our president of the United States lives. It's about a mile and a half from Gallaudet University. They marched with signs that said, deaf president now, deaf president now. They chanted and arrived at the university. When that White House rally was finished, they marched back to Gallaudet and deliberated. What should we do? Everybody was thinking. They came up with four demands. The first demand that these students had was to change to a deaf president, of course. The second demand was that the Board of Trustees chair, Jane Spillman, would resign. The third demand was that the Board of Trustees, which had always been run by hearing people, changed to 51% majority of deaf people on that Board of Trustees. And finally, everybody involved in the protest was not to suffer any reprisals. The night went on. It was a long night. They decided they had to block the university gates. There, were, there are four gates to the Gallaudet University campus. But they were thinking to themselves, how? They knew there was a bus, a school bus parking lot in the far end of the campus. So a couple of students knew how to hotwire the buses, and they blocked three of the gates in campus, except the front gate. There they sat the rest of the evening at that front gate, blocking it with themselves. They didn't eat. They didn't sleep. They waited all night until people started arriving for work and school. They decided that if you supported the protest, you were allowed in. If you were against it, you wouldn't be allowed into the campus. And that's how it went. Jane Spillman, the chair of the Board of Trustees, actually spoke to the media, and she said, we've chosen that candidate because deaf people are not ready to run this university. Imagine that she said that. The day went on, and Jane Spillman spoke to the students. She explained, all the protesters were mad. They were rallying. They were angry. And she said, please be quiet. Could you please be quiet? Nobody can hear me. Really? She used the word hear in front of the entire deaf community? Um, it made no sense. One of the leaders said, that's it. I'm not watching her anymore. Let's go. This time, they marched to Capitol Hill. When they got there, they draped a sign that said, Deaf President Now, over the um, banister. Some stayed, and the rest marched back, marched back to campus, and they stayed in the tent cities and the rallies for another 168 hours. The world was watching. The world was involved. 
And there were actually two Republican candidates, Robert Dole and George Bush Sr., who sent letters to, Ke to the Gallaudet University protesters and said, we support you because a deaf university should have a deaf president. It makes sense. The media were involved. Worldwide media, the world was watching. What happened next? March 13th finally arrived. The four demands were met. Zinzer resigned, that president, the hearing president. She didn't know any signs except for this one, which means I love you. That's the only sign she knew. She resigned. The second demand, that the board of trustees, Spillman, she needed to resign, and she did. Everybody was thrilled. There was celebration all day long. That day is called P-A-H, Pa Day. Why? Finally, that's the mouth movement you make when you sign the sign uh, success, Pa, P-A-H. 1988 will live on in our history as a very precious day. I'm going to show you a short video clip. You can see the four student leaders, and you can see them on Capitol Hill draping the banner over the banister there. Hmm, it looks like the video might not be working. Let's go ahead and wrap it up anyway. You, can, you saw a little bit of who those people were. Now I think you understand a little bit about why I'm deaf and proud to be part of that beautiful history, part of that proud deaf community, and Gallaudet University, which has given me so many opportunities and that mission at Gallaudet for bilingualism and the opportunity for me to actually come here as an intern. Thank you, the new Bulgarian University folks for inviting me. Oh, by the way, if you want to applaud, I'm just saying this is how you would do it. <laughs> Thank you.